ball player, but that alone does not explain his legend. For Babe Ruth was a phenomenon of the 1920s when America seemed young and carefree and exuberant. And we eagerly idolized a grown man because he could blast a leather-covered ball over an outfield fence. As for the babe himself, off the field and on, he was big and carefree and uncomplicated, tailor-made for the time he lived in. Babe Ruth made people love him. His wide grin and happy-go-lucky personality were irresistible. He was a roly-poly man who did everything in a big way, whether it was hitting home runs or having a night on the town. He loved kids. He delighted in being their hero, and they worshipped the bay. To shake his huge hand, to hear him say, hi, you kid, was a precious moment. There has never been an idol quite like him. Babe Ruth, the kid from Baltimore. George Herman Ruth is born in 1895. His childhood is spent in a tenement on the Baltimore waterfront. His father, George Sr., is a hard-working bartender. He and his wife, Kate, realize that by the time little George is seven, he's wild and uncontrollable. In desperation, they send him to St. Mary's Industrial School, an institution for delinquents and orphans. His discipline is entrusted to Brother Gilbert, a patient man who takes a special interest in the tough youngster, who during the next 12 years will grow to love him. He encourages George to play baseball and coaches him when he joins the school team. It's the turning point of Ruth's life. As the years pass, he becomes St. Mary's star ball player. Brother Gilbert stuck with me, Ruth will later recall. I owe him a lot more than I'll ever be able to repay. In 1914, George is 18 years old, ready to step out into the world. Jack Dunn, manager of the Baltimore Orioles, takes just one look at Ruth in action and offers him a contract. Ruth's salary is $25 a week, and he can hardly believe he's being paid to play baseball. His Baltimore teammates call the young rookie Jack's baby and it's soon shortened to Bay. With his new name, Babe Ruth enters a new world. Baseball is the national pastime, and there's a ballpark in every town. It's the kind of game a man can bring his wife and kids to. The ball players come from prairies, coal fields, manufacturing towns. They're hungry ball players, savagely competitive, skilled at using the bean ball and their spikes and their fists. They aren't coddled, they aren't prima donnas. When it rains, they're still expected to work. President Woodrow Wilson takes part in a scene that will be repeated many times in baseball history. the Boston Red Sox buy Babe Ruth's contract for $3,000. Only two years later, at the age of 21, he establishes an incredible World Series pitching record of 29 consecutive scoreless innings. He becomes one of the great pitching stars of his time. The troublemaking kid from Baltimore is on his way. Honors and awards start early for Babe Ruth, and so does marriage. He weds Helen Woodring, a pretty young waitress from Boston. In 1920, he becomes a New York Yankee, purchased for the then staggering sum of $125,000. And the Yankees discover Babe Ruth is worth every penny. For not only can he pitch, he's astonishing at bat. He's been switched to the outfield now so he can play every day. And his batting power amazes the baseball world. When he sets a new record with 29 home runs, most people say it can never be topped. But in his first year as a Yankee, Babe hits an unbelievable 54 home runs. The next year, he does even better. His total scores 
to 59. He's turned the record book upside down. Touring the country in the off-season gives the nation a chance to see Babe Ruth in person. On his tours with his pal Lou Gehrig, it's anything for a laugh. Babe is a perfect hero for the Roaring Twenties. He's a free and easy spender. So when a Hollywood film promoter offers him $50,000 to star in a silent movie, the Babe cannot refuse. According to Babe, there never was a film quite like it, thank God. And to make matters worse, his $50,000 check bounces. In the movie, Babe watches as his girl rides by in somebody else's canoe. Somehow, he's got to win her back. As the plot unfolds, Babe finally gets his chance to prove himself in the town's big game. office at the movies, he surely was at the ballpark. The new stadium is made possible by the great drawing power of Babe's name. He's the biggest single attraction in sports, bringing in more paid admissions than any other man in baseball history. The people come to see the Yankees, and Babe Ruth is the Yankees. 1927 is another season for the record book. For the past five years, Babe has been unable to come near his own record of 59 home runs. The fans are beginning to wonder if he's passed his prime. But as the season goes by, Ruth gives them his answer. The total slowly mounts. And late in the season, Ruth finally equals his old mark. 59 home runs. Now the pressure is really on he break his own record. By the last week of September, time has almost run out. Only a handful of chances are left. On September 27, 1927, the Yankees are playing the Washington Senators. Yankee Stadium is filled with thousands of fans hoping to see history made. In the first inning, the Babe hit the ground ball to the infield, and he's out at first base. In the fourth inning, he gets a hit, but it's only a single. In the sixth, Babe singles again. Finally, the eighth inning. The string has almost run out. The game is nearly over. Tom Zachary is the Washington pitcher. The score is tied. There's a man on third and one out. This is the moment. I'll do my best. I hope all you boys will be out there watching it. 
The third game 32 World Series has a special place in baseball history. This is Babe Ruth's own recollection of that famous day. I remember the beginning of the tough series. Both clubs riding each other, doing everything to get each other's goats. Well, I was just one particular time when I went to bat. Charlie Ruth was pitching. And the first pitch ball was a call strike. Well, I thought it was outside and didn't like it very much. So the boys over there would give me this, on you, on you. Well, the second pitch ball was another call strike. Well, I didn't like that one either, so I let it go by. Well, I stepped out of the box, and by that time, they were over there going crazy. Well, I looked out at center field, and I tore it. I said, I'm going to hit the next pitch ball right past the flagpole. Well, the good Lord must have been with me. 